three, two, one, and we are live. I believe we are live. Let's see. Yes. All right, gotta turn that off. There we go. There's always an errant window running that I must turn off. All right. Here, you know, here's the other problem I have. Positioning this microphone in such a way that the camera focuses on my face and focuses on me, not the microphone. All right. All of these wonderful pre-production things that I have uh, yet to master after, what is this now, the um, 52nd podcast, live stream podcast? You would think I would <laughs> have gotten it down by now. <laughs> But that's not true. That's okay. Someday I'll learn. Someday. Someday you will get a perfect podcast for me. Then again, what is a perfect podcast? Or a live stream? All right. Here we go. Today, my friends, is Friday, October 29th. Holy crap. This month is getting away from us. And um, Wednesday, I was conspicuously absent. Well, not so conspicuous if you knew where I lived and understood what was going on. And if you had read the title the, uh, to the, <laughs> this particular podcast, where I intimate or infer that a... Nor'easter may have deleterious effects on a butterfly, of course. But not, you know, the pretty butterfly, like we all know, but the butterfly strategy. Returning visitor. And um, it has uh, quite an effect on a butterfly strategy if you're unable. Hold on, got to turn this thing off because it's making way too much noise. If you're unable to take the trade because you have no power. I had no power for 30 hours. Now, here's something where I feel like that, uh, that, that idiom where, you know, the master's beating me for doing something stupid. Yet I come right back and say, thank you, sir. May I have another? Because I've been living in this area in this particular house now for, I don't know, 25 years. And it's a beautiful house, beautiful property, lots of acreages, um, sitting in the middle of 3,500 or 4,000 acres of conservation land. It's like being on vacation every day. However, living here has its challenges. And one of the challenges is that, um, well, first of all, the the uh, the electrical system the the telephone poles are old as sin and the wires themselves the the, the electrical guys keep on uh, telling me every time they're repairing a new power outage that they can't believe how old the wires are here they're fraying and <laughs> they must be a hundred years old and on top of that because we live in the woods they and because the roads here inside the, um, inside the Audubon are, are very, very narrow. As a matter of fact, my driveway is wider than the road. That's how narrow the road is. When there are two cars coming in opposite directions, they have to slow down so that they can crawl up on the edges of the road so they can get by each other. That's how narrow my road is. And they left less room for the telephone poles. So in many cases, the, the wires, you know, in, in some places, they'll, they'll place the telephone pole and they'll have a good 10, 15 feet on either side of the pole before they have any trees. No, that's not the way it is here. Here, they weave the telephone poles in between the trees. Actually, I think some of the trees are so old that they are literally attached to the telephone poles. <laughs> so anyways, uh, what happens then is because this isn't the most... Um, you know, subdued place in terms of weather. I mean, we have a lot of 
a lot of very interesting weather here in the Northeast. And uh, one of those that is in particular to our area is something called a nor'easter. Now, a nor'easter is, is a really nasty storm. It's like an unnamed hurricane. Now, of course, hurricanes, they start out in the you know, mid-Atlantic somewhere, somewhere down south, and they pick up steam, and, they, and then they come up the coast, and they might make them up, up this way every once in a while. And they can be pretty dev devastating with 100-plus mile-an-hour winds. But a nor'easter isn't that way. A nor'easter forms itself out, well, somewhere out in the mid-Atlantic, but not down south. Uh, and sometimes it forms, it's a conglomeration of a couple of storms, one that might be coming up from the south, one that's coming from the west, and another one that's coming from We're the east. And then they kind of combine and create a little supercell, superstorm, and because of the geography of New England, it tends to hang out right above, right to the right, usually about 90, 100 miles off the coast of Massachusetts or Boston. And then it spins in a counterclockwise direction. And then that causes the wind to come across Massachusetts and into Connecticut from a northeasterly direction. Hence the name Nor'easter. Now, the problem with the geography and the way this all works and this, this uh, com combination of three storms all c coming together, creating this kind of cyclone, is that it's very long-lived. It tends to sit there and just act like a big water and wind pump and then just pump water. And, you know, over the past couple of days of the storm, probably got about, I don't know, between 9 and 15 inches of rain. And there were parts of the Cape that were getting sustained winds above 90 miles an hour. That <laughs> is a nor'easter. And so many nor'easters have come and just ruined our, our day uh, in the past. And they come at any time. They can come during the summer. They can come in the fall. They can come in the middle of the winter. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest winter storms we ever had was because of a nor'easter. It was called the Blizzard of 78. That, that day, I remember that day very, very well. We got dumped on us 52 inches of snow in one night. One night. 52 inches. And it wasn't light snow. It was that heavy, dense, wet, unbelievably thick snow. And it put our town, I lived in a town called Norwood at the time, which actually is only a couple of miles away from where I live now. And our town, and including many of the towns in the surrounding area, were literally shut down for more than two weeks. We had to have, we had to have milk and bread airlifted in, and we went on rationing because none of the stores could open. The uh, Route 128, which is... The route that surrounds Boston, it, it goes uh, like a semicircle around Boston, was closed. And there were tens of thousands of cars that were left there stranded because of the storm. Of course, these days, they have such great foretelling of these storms that they get out ahead of them. But I don't even think that they could have matched the ferocity of this storm, even these days. But anyways, that was a nor'easter. So um, there has been at least in the last, and because I live in the middle of a wildlife sanctuary, there's been at least, um, and you may be wondering, what does this have to do with butterflies? I'll tell you. So uh, in the past 10 years, maybe 12 years, we've had at least two incidences where we've had outages for more than five days up to a week. And many instances where we've had one, two, three days. Yet, I remain here. It's kind of like living on the coast, you know, the South Carolina or Florida and taking those hurricanes coming up there. It's kind of the same thing. But we endure because of the beauty and the, um, you know, everything there is about this area, except for the winters. The winters suck. But summertime, fall, spring are beautiful here. Anyways, that's why I did not publish a podcast on Wednesday, because I had no power. 
No power. No power, no podcast. It's the power podcast. Or a power is necessary for the podcast. And also, no trade. But that was good because the trade, there wasn't really much of a trade anyway. So we were good. We really didn't miss anything. But I hate not getting the podcast out. So anyways, I'm here. It's Friday. And we have power. We have a trade, and it was a fantastic trade. Made about 300% today, I'd say, for me anyways. And I'm sure that there are some people that are still in the trade. Um, but um, it's probably maxed out right around here. And that's a zero DTE trade where we trade the last day of expiration on options for the S&P. And we trade both the E-mini futures as well as the index, the SPX options on both of those things because they expire they have three expiries every week monday wednesday and friday unless there's a holiday then if there's a holiday on monday then it gets shifted to tuesday if it's on friday then it gets shifted to thursday which makes it very interesting but mostly monday Wait, wednesday and visitor. monday wednesday and friday and um so we get this opportunity every week and it's an incredible opportunity because there are some built-in advantages for us for one because options are expiring on that last day that means that premium is accelerating in terms of its collection right and we use generally we use the butterfly strategy not just there are different variations of the butterfly but let's just say the the butterfly strategy which is uh, theta positive and vega negative, which means that over time, theta is on our side. In other words, premium is collected if we're the net seller of options. And vega, vega negative, meaning that is volatility is dropping, it is also in our favor. But not, I mean, those are the things that give us the edge, but they are not absolutely necessary because no matter what happens, Theta will <laughs> come in and Vega will also uh, come in. I mean, you cannot stop time. That is one thing in this strategy that you cannot stop. You cannot stop time. Time, all I'm saying is that um, volatility helps us if we can get in at a higher volatility during the day. And then if the volatility decreases during the day, that would um, generally increase our ability to make profit and keep us out of, you know put us in and out of the trade more quickly that would be the ideal situation however it's not necessary but that's what we would look for so in other words a um, a pullback and then a continuation of a trend would be the ideal situation if it happened right at the right time so here's here's my um my uh, outlook on what would be the perfect trade for a zero dte you're getting set up, it's uh, the morning time, and because it's the morning, the cash market hasn't opened, we have to choose whether we're gonna choose or trade the E-mini S&P futures or the SPX. And because the SPX, we cannot get into it until the cash market opens, we use the futures. So we wait for economic reports to come out around 8.30, and hopefully there will be one that will kind of upset the market a little bit, maybe pull it back. Or maybe something happened overnight and the euro open caused the market to pull back. And that would increase um, the volatility because market would pull back and that increase in volatility would inflate premium. And so what we would do is we would hang an order as that um, premium is coming down, capture it, essentially sell premium when it's bloated, in other words, it's overpriced. And then as the market uh, opened up and maybe an econo a good economic report came out, or in this case, a bad economic report because we're in opposite world, that's a whole different story. And then price started to go up. So it pulls back, bloats premium, op market opens, goes up, we're in the trade, riding this overpriced option as as uh, volatility is decreasing and premium is, is, is accelerating both from volatility and time. And we get out with like a 300% profit. Well, that's exactly what happened today. <laughs> and that's also what happened on Monday. 
It seems to happen a lot. Uh, and uh, we can put on different types of butterflies that will take advantage of this. And generally, we're not looking at the butterfly as a market neutral device. We're looking at it as a directional device. And so we can trade symmetrical butterflies. We can trade the broken wing butterfly, which is asymmetrical, meaning that we have uneven wings on either side. Or we can trade the unbalanced butterfly, which is essentially a symmetrical or broken wing butterfly with an additional credit spread lapped right on top of it so that the wings are unbalanced in terms of the number of contracts that they have. And uh, that's, a wonderful butterf that's a wonderful butterfly strategy because it gives us extra premium because we have extra contracts. So we, on the wings, we have, say, one contract on one side and two contracts on the other. But the center strikes, we have three. So we have three contracts providing premium for us, premium collection. So that's like a supercharged butterfly. And um, the nor'easter can't touch us now because it's already gone. It's out to sea. Anyways, that's what's happening today. Um, let's see. We have some questions. Chris wants to know, how did you become a wizard? <laughs> so Chris calls me a wizard because I have this uncanny ability to be able to call the direction of the market and you know look it, it happens regularly but I mean I can't always tell which way the market's going and I and I'll tell you in this particular strategy one of the secrets to becoming a wizard Chris is shortening the time frame in which you're going to call the market and get all the information up front and then then at least you have a better shot at calling the market and then putting on strategies that are forgiving like the butterfly that you can win whether you're going in one direction stay still or go in another direction so all of that combined is sort of wizardry magic sleight of hand it makes me appear better than i am but you could learn how to do that too uh, let's see zero gravity is asking um Call me crazy, but maybe buying a backup generator might do the trick. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you know, I've been here in this house. We've been actually living in the Audubon. We, we had another house on the other side about 25 years ago. But I've been in this house for 25 years. And uh, it took me 22 years before I bought a snowblower. And I have a very long and steep driveway. I used to shovel that all by hand. So just two years ago, I bought my first snowblower. <laughs> and all of this time, we've been talking about getting a generator. And I think now, you know, now it's time. We're definitely going to buy a generator now. It's an expensive endeavor because we've got, you know, a big house, a couple of big refrigerators. We work at home. We've got computers everywhere. So we draw a lot of power from the grid. So then, you know, maybe what we could do I could clear a couple of acres back there, maybe um, put up a solar farm. As a matter of fact, I was talking to my neighbor about possibly doing that. Maybe we could get together because he has a lot of acreage too. Maybe we could combine and maybe clear, I don't know, three, four acres and then turn it into a solar farm. And maybe that would uh, help our power needs. All these things that we could do. So um, Zach wants to know, the money you make on the trade during the outage just might pay for the generator. Yeah, that's true. We did very well on, uh, on today's strategy, on today's trade. Actually, we do quite well on most trades. Um, because of the asymmetric nature of our trades, our risk is always very small and our potential profit is always very large. And so our average return on our risk is usually around 150%, with many trades going to 300, 400, 1,000, even 1,500% on a trade. Now, that is unheard of in the zero DTE world, but that's how we're doing it here at zero-dte.com. Very different from what everybody else is doing, doing something that I call the inversion of risk. And so um, our strategy, I believe, is just vastly superior to any of those others. But that's not really what we're about here at this service. What we're really about is 
teaching you how to become a better trader. Whether you're new to options or you're an experienced trader, I will show you the methods, the strategy, and the processes that we use to become really top rank traders where you where you can make a damn good living trading three days a week and then have your weekends off and Tuesdays and Thursdays off. Let's see. The money you make on a trade during an outage. Oh, that's a, um, let's see. Oh, same message. Okay. So that is how a nor'easter would affect a butterfly. Put you out of commission. But that's also, you know, there's probably another interesting lesson in that, and that is around the uh, idea of disaster recovery. Because we started the day, it looked pretty good. And even though the wind was howling and I could hear branches cracking uh, in the background, the market was still up, but I knew it was only a matter of time. And then a massive branch at the top of my driveway off of a big oak tree came down across the wires and just took them down. And then that was it. And we had to wait for rescue. And it took um, 30 hours before they got to us. Now, we were lucky. There were a lot of other people that are still without power today. So it's going on three days. And there may be some that may be without power for five days or more. And I really feel for them because I understand exactly how they feel. I've been there more than more than once. Um, so yeah, a generator is definitely in the cards. That's one way you can mitigate this problem by having a generator maybe powered by diesel or gas or propane. We're probably going to do the propane thing. The other thing is that you need to know what your backup sources are, right? If you have battery backup, first of all, that's that's a absolute essential when you're trading. You should have battery a uninterruptible power supply on all your computers so that in the event that you do have a power outage, at least your computers are going for that time being and you can manage um, powering them down safely and preserving any trades or work that you have without you know, losing that. The other thing is that you need to have a direct line to your broker. You need to be able to get in touch with them in case you have to make a trade that you cannot do online. You could either do it on your phone or you could call them. Right? So you need to have these kind of uh, disaster mitigation strategies already in place, regardless of whether or not you live in the middle of an Autobahn. Because there's plenty of other things that could happen, whether you're in Arizona out in the desert <laughs> or in the northeast facing a nor'easter. Always very important. All right. So there you go. There is, um, let's see, we are 25 minutes. We're going to make this a short podcast. Um I want to thank everybody for showing up. Thank you for the questions. And uh, if you would like to try out this strategy, this fantastic strategy, this strategy that, that creates such joy in all of our lives, that uh, completely alleviates us from the stress of trading because of our asymmetry that we use and because of all the edges that we have in terms of that positive theta and negative vega trade, then go to 0-dte.com slash try. That's T-R-Y. And you can do a four-week trial. At the end of that four-week trial, if you like the service and you want to join, I will rebate the cost of that trial. We give you four weeks because, like I said, this is not just an alert service. In that four weeks, you're going to get a hell of an education on trading. Whether you, are, whether you think you're experienced or not. And if you're new to trading, you're going to learn a skill, a trading skill and a methodology that will be with you for the rest of your life. That's how valuable that four weeks is. Of course, after that, it's even more gravy. Oh, another question. Do you have plans in going up on your annual price this year or next? No. 
Uh, I don't, as a matter of fact. As long as I can keep on bringing people in at this, I, I'm fine, you know. Uh, and, and to that point, the price is just r ridiculously low. Uh, but I'm having fun doing this. I have a blast. We've got now about, I don't know, 300-something members. And uh, it's growing at an incredible rate. We bring on, I don't know, on average about 50, 60 people a month. So it's uh, really cool. So I, I don't really have any plans on going up on the price. So join now. You never know. You know, you've, you've sparked something in me, man. <laughs> Maybe I should raise the price. All right. I want to thank everybody for, uh, for being here. Thank you again. Peace. And uh, we'll see you on Monday. Actually, we'll see you on Sunday night because that's when, for us, the market really opens. Peace to you. Take care. All right. Got to find that off button. There it is. Take care.